My name is Anega Jemian Rayleigh, the daughter of the late Armenian artist Pasquale Ariel Ajemian. Through my eyes, as his daughter, I would like to share his life. We lived in a small row house in Brooklyn, New York, by the shore. I vividly can envision the wall-to-wall -wall paintings, the memorabilia he brought from Europe to America, the furniture, which he handcrafted, and of course, the oriental rugs. Armenian artist Ariel Ajemian is an artist writer with the dual expression of idealistic and materialistic art. He was always the artist who demonstrated the myriad of experiences and appearances in the existence of life. We were culturally rich with Armenian music, the classics, Italian opera, and shelves filled with books in all different languages. I recall the vivid historic fables told at the dining room table. Oh, and yes, the Italian and the Armenian cuisine. We traveled frequently to Philadelphia and Boston, where we nurtured relationships with our extended Armenian families and celebrated religious events. My father worked at home. He had a special corner in the living room where he sketched daily or in his downstairs studio for larger works. He was especially proud of his studio with the overhead skylight since it's led natural light in. I wonder often, could it be that he was nostalgic for his Venetian roots since we lived in an Italian neighborhood surrounded by water. Ariel was born in Bursa, Turkey. At the age of nine, he witnessed the Turkish massacre and the death of his father. He was then separated from his mother and brother and taken by the Mekataras monks to Rome and soon on to Venice where he was educated until he was 18 years of age. He received the degree of Maestro d'Arte and a full professorship in art from the Academy of Fine Arts in Venice and a doctorate in philosophy from the University of Padua, Italy, when he was 21. In 1958, Pope Pius XII awarded him the highest honor given to a layman, the honor of the Knight of St. Gregory. He met his agreement with the Mechaturist monks who supported his continuing education by painting a few historical religious works which still hang in the dining room and in the hallway of the college. His artistic career started in France. During the period 1931 to 1938, his paintings were appreciated and widely exhibited in Paris, Vienna, Venice, and Milan. He was primarily concerned with religious art and profane subjects. He began to paint prolifically after resigning as art professor at the Morat College in Sevres, France. Ajemian's mural technique reflected the influence of old masters such as Titian. As time went on, he showed himself to be versatile, equally at home with small compositions as well as monumental murals found at the College Morat in Sevres. Subjects included portraits, still life, landscapes, nudes, and battle scenes. His portraits were of dignitaries from the political, religious, and entertainment world. They included Giovanni Martinelli, Louis Martin, Minister of the French Navy, and he was most honored to paint Pope Pius XI and Cardinal Agagenian. He is most known for the face of Christ, which he painted in 1935, and is considered the most exact positive image from the negative image, the Shroud of Turin. Ariel was a deeply religious man, still wanting to nourish the seed of a priestly vocation. He also wanted to spend some time in America and study the American people for a series of tableaux on democracy. Thus his decision to spend several months in the United States. This move in 1938 signaled the start of a new era for the young artist. An art exhibit in 1939 in New York was described as one of the most extraordinary assemblages to be seen on Art Gallery Row in a long time. Critics proclaimed, the artist reveals a diversifying talent with the ability to deal with formal organization, a nice color sense, and a generally romantic approach, obviously trained in European traditions of sound craftsmanship. Unfortunately, he left the majority of his paintings from the late 20s to the early 30s in his studio in Paris, intending at the time to return to retrieve them after his short stay in America. Fate dictated otherwise. The SS Normandy, on which he had booked his return passage in 1942, caught fire in the New York Harbor. 
Regarding this omen, he never again attempted to return, and what had begun as a three-month stay extended to the last 25 years of his life. While settling in New York City, he set up studio and met many celebrities in the musical world through his teaching. One of his pupils, Maria Roxas, was an artist in her own right and soon to be his wife and my mother. Maria's father was the coach for the Metropolitan Opera Singers and her mother sang with Neapolitan Opera Company. Soon portraits of opera stars hung in his studio. Maria and Ariel were married in 1939, and in 1941, their first and only son, Stefan, was born. The joys of life were now multiplied with the bearing of a son, who would carry on the Egemian name and talent. I was born in 1943, and reflect on the fact that my family and I have been surrounded by art and music all our lives. Ariel decided not to delay any longer his priestly vocation, and he could continue, and would continue, to love God through his art and paint mostly religious works. At the same time, he changed the medium for his work from oils to pastels, to pen and ink, and to chalk images on dark construction paper. The passage from dark to light in life manifested in the shift from dark background to light in his painting. Those shifts made in his medium reflected his experience of traumatic witnessing of the horrific event of the genocide, his frustrations in having a handicapped son, and the conflicts he experienced between his art and his love of God. Thus, he worked through all of this psychic turmoil in his writings and in his art, tapping into the deep religious devotion that was powerfully reflected in his writings and drawings. From 1945 to 1963, my father painted daily illustrations for the Confraternity of Precious Blood. He rarely sold any of his paintings or portraits that he may have spontaneously drawn during those years. In fact, he donated most of his money to the Armenian Catholic Church. The major collection of works which he brought from Europe and what paintings he did in America are displayed in our home.